of the 2024. Uh, so we are happy to, to keep with this with these seminars happening every month. Normally, uh, the last Wednesday of the month, uh, only for this month, we changed this and we are celebrating the meeting on Thursday because of uh, personal circumstances of our speaker, but that's a problem at all. Uh, thanks everyone for joining and remember that, that, that we are here even if on Thursday. Uh, so today we are very happy of being hosting uh, this talk uh, with Haider Mian. Uh, thanks, Haider, for accepting our invitation. Uh, Haider is a research assistant at the Biostatistics and Health Informatics Department here at King's. Uh, he joined us as a fellow for the NIHR doctoral uh, fellowship. Uh, he used this uh, funds for following our MSc in Applied Statistical Modeling and Health Informatics. Uh, he previously has made a study at VSC, VSC and MSc in the statistics uh, with honors uh, in Pakistan. And he joined us about uh, one year and a half ago uh, to, to this, the MSc studies and then working uh, with me for the last uh, six months as well. Uh, he's now by the end of his uh, predoctoral fellowship and this is a preliminary work that he has developed on clustering um, patients on inflammatory bowel disease uh, using electronic health records. Uh, we are very happy to be listening to your talk and work. Uh, hi there. So as soon as you you, you, you like, oh, sorry. Uh, you can just start. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you so much, dear Dr. Raquel, for the nice words and kind introduction. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, if you can okay. put it in presentation presentation mode, maybe. Oh yeah, it, it is in presentation mode. Thank is you. It? Yeah, we can oh. see it perfectly. Thank you. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to present my work on deploying machine learning algorithm to certify patients with inflammatory bowel disease using routinely collected electronic health records. So sometime missing the hidden pattern in data, preventing us from drawing correct per, correct this conclusions. So it is aim of why we are using uh, unsupervised algorithms. So what are unsupervised algorithms? Unsupervised algorithms have the ability to find these pattern and make sense of the data even without direct guidance. Unsupervised algorithm are implied to uh, subgroup information according to the underlying structure within the data. So <clears throat> how it is different from supervised learning? So unsupervised learning presents greater difficulty because there is no universally accepted method for evaluating its outcome. So the result dra drawn from unsupervised algorithm are not uh, like uh, um, <clears throat> evaluating as we are evaluating it in supervised learning using a tuning parameter and all in testing and other kind of stops. So how these are applied and what are the applicability of unsupervised learning? So clustering is popular in many fields from banking to test text. There are several <laughs> unsupervised learning algorithms that are util utilized from, for clustering um, observation, but not all algorithms are suitable for every data sets because there are every data set has different features and different um, um, uh, observation, for example, qualitative and quantitative observation. So in this in this study, um, we used uh, data from uh, data from uh, King's College Hospital. Uh, the, the data included, uh, the, the data extracted from electronic health records consisted from June 2016 to May 2023. We extracted um, information of 700 patients who, who, are, who are taking advanced therapies and um, taking uh, uh, IBD services from uh, gastroenterology department of King's Hospital. Uh, so uh, when we when we extracted the data, there was like very less observation, uh, very less uh, features. But uh, under the guidance of my supervisors, uh, I um, engineered many features, and we re and our uh, our data set reached to 70 um, uh, features that included 38 quantitative and 32 uh, qualitative uh, variables. So. 
for clustering this observation, uh, we used k-means clustering. K-mean is one of the simplest clustering algorithm for organizing observation into uh, different subgroups. The it is the simplest uh, it is the simplest uh, algorithm, but the, uh, here is only one uh, drawback as well. So the drawback is that um, k-mean clustering is a required uh, number of cluster in advance. So how to decide? Uh, our, our objective. So uh, uh, our data was mixed. Mixed mean we um, in our data we have, as I mentioned, we have uh, like uh, qualitative and quantitative variables, and we were interested in um, identifying clinical relevant uh, of patients with different outcome and clinical profile, and to identify the most discriminating features of the identified clusters. So to do this, we use uh, uh, to do this. Came in, came in is um, uh, acceptable for um, uh, qualitative, quantitative uh, variables, but there is an extension called K prototypes, which is suitable for um, data having qualitative and quantitative observation. Uh, K prototypes uh, offers more comprehensive approach to clustering, allowing it to effectively deal with data set. That contain mixed numerical, mixed observation, mixed features, uh, for example, numerical and categorical. This method, uh, this methods combine the strength of K means suitable for numerical data and K modes uh, specialized for categorical data. So this means that K prototypes, when we have, uh, um, when we use K prototype, so it is you, it use uh, K means for quality, K, K mean for uh, quantitative observation and uh, mode for qualitative observation. For pre, uh, so uh, to uh, to proceed with uh, data analysis, we processed our data. So qualitative features were coded and quantitative features were uh, scaled. Uh, you min max scalar, uh, so that it was done to that every every quali every quantitative variable or every numerical variable is considered equally. Missing observation were imputed using uh, K nearest neighbor and mode value and zero. Uh, the <coughs> as men, as I mentioned that K, uh, K mean required the number of uh, cluster to be uh, uh, assigned beforehand. Therefore, the optimal number of cluster were obtained by uh, Silhoti and Elbow methods. So from this method, from this method, from elbow and Silhoti method, we obtained uh, we obtained uh, the uh, optimal number of k. So uh, there is uh, on x-axis there, there there is on the x-axis on the graph there is like number of clusters and the y y-axis there is within cluster sum of square and Silhoti score uh, score. So the Silhoti score is like uh, from minus one to one. So uh, uh, the max, uh, so as the score is the, ma um, the maximum score mean that uh, observation are uh, close to um, co close to each other uh, within um, uh, within each uh, uh, cluster. So in our uh, analysis, uh, uh, we seted our parameters according to um, based on the Silhoti score. So we used uh, K is equal to three and we have mixed variable. That's why we used prototypes and weight is also a parameter which is called gamma in prototypes. So we we um, uh, we we use uh, we weighted qualitative and quantitative features equally because uh, we was not giving any importance to any feature. So similarity metric was used mean for uh, numerical observation and mode for uh, qualitative uh, or categorical observation. Uh, and Huang was used as uh, cluster centroid. And each and, uh, uh, and this was initialized using uh, 25 times. So it means that based on Huang initial uh, Huang centroid, we um, repeated our measure 25 times uh, to uh, uh, to select the best center for each uh, variable or for each cluster based on their um, uh, uh, applicability. So. Mm. 
after clustering, we used uh, chi-square statistics, uh, chi-square test, analysis of variance, and uh, kruskal wallis non-parametric test. Uh, these statistics was used to compare <coughs> uh, uh, each cluster uh, composition. Uh, these are uh, results which we obtained after clustering. Uh, we applied uh, to categorical variable. We applied uh, chi-square, and from chi-square observation, we got uh, like uh, those who are taking uh, advanced therapy from less than three years, and uh, those who have not specified their um, marital status, and those who are single, and um, uh, demographic information such as um, uh, uh, race, such as black, unknown, and they were also uh, uh, significant, significant among uh, a feature among the clusters. So advanced therapy such as adalimum and vidolizumum, they, they were also uh, uh, significant among the clusters. So for continuous variable, for, for numerical variable, we used analysis of uh, variance to obtain the significant features among uh, each cluster. So body mass uh, index, which is also bolded. Uh, Fuckel cal protectant is a, a test used in um, a very important test used for diagnosis of uh, inflammatory bowel disease patient and then mean plate, platelet volume. So um, they were obtained significant from uh, uh, analysis of variance. So, and, uh, so like so, the, these variable were um, a categorical variable. The categorical mean there were number of uh, of the num number. So, like number of IBD letter and each this thing were number. So that's why I applied uh, Kruskal's uh, uh, non-parametric test. Uh, yeah, on uh, from this test, IBD letter, uh, home care documents and patient who are visiting um, continuously visiting um, a gastroenterology department so uh, and these are also called services taken by uh, ibd patient so they were also found significant uh, among uh, the among uh, the clusters so in the context of unsupervised learning approach when k was 3 so key differenti differentiating feature was focal cal protecting, body mass index and mean platelet volume, marital status, uh, taking advanced therapy from less than uh, three years, and service axis was found uh, significant. So in conclusion, uh, in conclusion, this uh, preliminary analysis suggested patients who are relatively uh, early in their journey with least with at least moderate active IBD take up more uh, more services. So this means that those patients who are early in their IBD journey or started their IBD journey, they are taking more more services. For example, they are visiting. Um, uh, they they are mostly visiting for follow up. They are calling uh, uh, gastroenterology department and they are take and they are um, uh, taking more um, advanced therapies. This also associate with their social circumstances. For example, as I mentioned that people who are single and who not specified their uh, um, uh, marital status and, uh, uh, and ethnic, ethnic background were also found uh, significant. F uh, further work will explore, explore these interaction in more detail. So we are currently, uh, and this was the first part of my um, uh, fellowship. So we are currently working on uh, the, uh, advancing, um, advancing our analysis. We are currently uh, working on a DB scan with uh, Gower distance and <clears throat> hierarchical, hierarchical clustering. So after that, we will compare our result with after 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 obtaining result from that, we will uh, compare these results, uh, the, the results of these three algorithms. Uh, this uh, project, uh, my in in this project, uh, Dr. Raquel Iniesta and Dr. Politec, uh, Dr. Polychronis Paulidis was involved with me um, as of my primary and secondary supervisor, respectively. Uh, in uh, uh, many many pre people from gastroenterology department also helped helped me 
in extracting data and understanding the data because this data I was this data was new to me and I was don't know anything about the data. They also helped me a lot. And uh, as men, as Dr. Raquel mentioned, so our this project was um, funded by NHR uh, round four uh, in round four as a predoctoral fellow. Under this project, I completed my MSc and currently I'm working as a RA and with Dr. Raquel. Uh, so this was like a very uh, we did a very less uh, so I did a very less work. That's why um, uh, it is ended in uh, like a couple of minutes. Uh, thank you everyone for your time. If you have any question. Thank you very much, uh, Haider. We know that that was a, a, a very big effort uh, because you were growing all this and knowledge and the methodology at the same time that you were extracting the data that was uh, quite challenging. Uh, I have a first question, actually. Um, you were saying you didn't know the data and, and, and I can see that it was hard to get the data and extract that information. So I would like to, to know what were the, the challenges that you found of working with electronic health records? So the first challenge was like uh, getting access to the uh, electronic health record. As you know, we were we was like struggling with uh, getting approval from the uh, carry committee. So that was like it. Got, um, it was um, so um, it uh, I, I, it took me, uh, too much time. And then uh, extracting data, for example, there was many observation, many observation which was missed or this was like a typos. Because uh, uh, I type in my uh, like in my way and some other type in their own way, so uh, everything was uh, th that was very challenging. So for example, dads, dads, so some uh, someone uh, someone write dads in one format while uh, while other uh, wrote it in another format. So th this was very challenging. And another so this this data as you know that this data each each variable was like maximum categories. Some variable was like ten categories. So this, that was also a very uh, challenging for me. Thank you. Is there any question from the attendants? Uh, yes, I think that there's uh, some comments yeah. in the chat. Yes. Yes. How did you handle missing data, Diana? Is asking. Thank yes. Diana. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned that I, I used a uh, KNS number uh, for continuous variable and K mode for um, categorical variable uh, for uh, for qualitative variable and then zero as uh, this was inst instructed by um, uh, my secondary supervisor that those who has uh, no uh, for example in 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 categorical variable there's the number of uh, number of services so that were missing so my supervisor told me to uh, impute that with zero. And that was because uh, when there was no value, is because it was assumed that there was no, no service no, used. No service, yeah. It was not really a missing, but it was an, uh, an informative value. Thank you. Is there any other question? I have a question, if not. So you said that you have used the K prototype, but that you are planning. Um, DB scan. Well, I think VB scan. Um, yeah. So, what is the benefit that you expect from using VB scan? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? It, what would be the benefit of being using VB scan from your okay. point of view? Yeah, yeah. So, um, um, as I uh, mentioned in my uh, predoctoral application, so the benefit is that to compare these both algorithms, so that which one from which one we can get uh, best results. Mm -hmm. There is another question in the chat. Did you need to acquire specific medical knowledge in order to handle the data and its conclusion? Did you need medical knowledge? So uh, no, I think there is no need because um, uh, my all supervisory team was very uh, like cooperative and they assisted me very well. So if, for example, anytime, uh, so I have all the messages and chat with me. So once I text with my supervisor at night and at that time he um, uh, like uh, uh, answered me that time as well. So I think there is no need of medical knowledge. You had a supervisor who had the medical knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So, so my supervisor. Thank yeah. you. 
Thank you, Fatma Ali. There is another question from Taro. Hi, Taro. Thank you for an insightful and interesting talk. How did you select the set of medically relevant variables? How did you select this set of variables, uh, Mian? Okay. okay. So um, I, I was not. I not selected this, but this was uh, this was already selected by a physician uh, from gastroenterology department, and they gave me like that, uh, and they told me to extract this information, and from that information. We then made a new observation, new, new features like uh, um, uh, so, like data, like age, then drug transition that time, and many other uh, uh, features from uh, uh, from uh, from the um, uh, already existed uh, uh, features. Okay, so it was guided by cl existing clinical knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Taru. Is there? Any other comment or question? OK, if there's nothing else, then we will leave it for finish. OK, so thanks very much for uh, to Haider for having um, showed us uh, your your interesting work on IVD patients and clustering characteristics. Thank you very much, Haider. Thanks very Thank much so to much. all the attendants. We will Thank be here all. next month, last Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you.